Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of Little Liturgies, an online prayer to help you during your time of at home or at school learning. Let us begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. So my friends, today we continue our Easter journey and learning from Jesus the teacher. In particular, Jesus wants to teach us how to see him in our everyday lives. And today's story of the, of the, from the Gospel of Luke, of the road to Emmaus, uh, teaches us how we encounter Jesus through breaking open the word of God. So as we begin, let us call to mind anything that might keep us from the communion of love and ask the Lord for his mercy, his healing, and his peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we continue our journey of the Easter season, appear to us along the way. Help us to encounter you, to hear your voice in our lives, and to follow your call of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So my friends, as I mentioned, uh, today's Gospel reading is from the Gospel of Luke. It's chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. And so this reading uh, is after Jesus has risen from the dead. And what has happened is Jesus has been appearing to people, uh, but at first they don't recognize him. And that's because he's trying to teach his disciples, teach us, how to see him in new ways. Because Jesus wants to be present to all people in the world. So let us begin. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about 11 miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each, each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who is a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he would be the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as, it, 
as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem. Then they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen, indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had, had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So my friends, today we share in a lovely little story uh, about Jesus rising from the dead. And as I mentioned, this time of Easter is about, well, the way I describe it, is about Jesus, the teacher, trying to teach us how to recognize him in our everyday lives. Because as I mentioned, Jesus, like his heart is so big, his love is so great that he no longer wants to be just at one place at one time. He wants to be present to all people because that is his love. Like his love just, he wants to care for everybody. He wants to care for you. He wants to care for me. But how can he do that? So in his glorified body, he now appears to us in different ways. And he's trying to teach us what those ways are. So we have, as you heard in the story, Jesus appears to the disciples, but they do not recognize him. And this is part of the training. If, if Jesus showed up in ways that they're used to seeing him, they would be hesitant to learn new ways. So he veils himself from the disciples so that now he can start to teach them something new. Then he, you know, when they, when, he, when they say that they're sad about Jesus dying, which is legitimately sad, uh, he opens up the scriptures for them. So he takes the scriptures, which for the Jewish people would have been what we call the Old Testament. Um, so the first like four fifths of the Bible that you have and describes the various prophecies and teachings in the scriptures about how a Messiah had to come and undergo a cross, death, and resurrection. Teachings about Jesus himself. And then at first the disciples, like, they haven't clued in yet. They're like, mm, you know, that's really very interesting and it's starting to give them hope. Uh, but still, like, they're still upset and saddened that Jesus has disappeared or died, I should say. And then when they gather around the table and he takes the bread, blesses it and breaks it, boom, their eyes are open because it's an action that Jesus did at the Last Supper. So this reading is very much has the elements that we celebrate when we have mass. Like when we do the liturgy of the word for our little liturgies, that's the first half of the mass. And then for those of you who have the opportunity to have a school mass or go to mass on Sunday, you get to see the second half, which is uh, the Last Supper scene, the liturgy of the Eucharist, in which Jesus, or the priest on behalf of Jesus, takes the bread, breaks it, blesses it, and breaks it and gives it to the people. And we share in the Eucharist together. So what does this all mean? Well, Jesus is trying to teach us that two ways he comes to us here, now, today, for you, my friends, is when we read from the word of God with prayerful hearts and reflect upon it. Like, this isn't just a book, my friends. Like, we believe that when we prayerfully read the scriptures and reflect upon them, Jesus is speaking to our hearts. 
And then when we attend Mass, Jesus comes and is truly present to us in the Eucharist. So the gifts of the bread and the wine, by the power of the Holy Spirit, become the real presence of Jesus, his body and his blood. I know that can sound a little unusual, but just to give you a little teaching about the Mass, the way Jesus uses the word body and blood are different than the way we use them now in our time and age. So when you hear Jesus say, this is my body, what he's saying is, I am truly present to you. So like right now, you can see me through the internet, through YouTube, but it's different and even better when I can be present to you in your classroom. Like then you could raise your hand and we could ask, you could ask a question I could answer. I could learn about you and your family and how your class is going. Like there's just more, it's, it's more real and more special when you can be face to face with someone. And we do that through our bodies. Like I'm present here and you would be present there and we could just see each other and be present to us in a way that we can't over the internet. And so when Jesus shows up in the Eucharist, in the body of Christ, what he means is, I am really present to you. And we do that for situations or celebrations that are really important. Like if something's really important, we show up in person. So like birthdays and weddings and funerals, like those really significant moments in our lives, you know it's special when someone has shown up in person. And that's what Jesus does at the Mass. His, he comes with his whole body, his whole self, to be present to you because he loves you. And then with the precious blood, the by the power of the Holy Spirit, the wine is made, the, the precious blood of Jesus, the blood of the new covenant. What does this mean? Well, for our Jewish friends, when you read the Old Testament and you hear the and read about the use of the word blood, for them, it re it means life, like that's like life that only God can give. That's why it was so sacred for our Jewish friends. And so when Jesus says, this is my blood, what he's really doing is giving you the gift of eternal life. That's, that's what he wants to do. It's another way of saying, I want to bring all of you into the kingdom of heaven and free you from the effects of sin and death. So. At the Mass, we receive Jesus' real presence and his gift of everlasting life through his body and his blood. And that scene is kind of the, what we do at Mass is spoken about at the end of today's reading when Jesus breaks the bread and gives it to the disciples. So my friends, for me, this is really awesome. Like I love, I always wonder, you know, where, you know, these stories are great and all, but where is Jesus now today? Like, where can I go and see him and talk to him or just be in his presence? Well, here it is, my friends, all of you who are in grade four and above, you have received one of these Bibles. When you can open with prayer in your heart, the gospel readings and slowly read it and allow Jesus to speak to your heart, just like we do here with the little liturgy. And for those of you who have the opportunity to have a school Mass or to come to Sunday Mass, you are getting the Liturgy of the Word and the very special Liturgy of the Eucharist, where Jesus, or where the priest, on behalf of Jesus, takes the bread and the wine, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, they become his actual presence, his, his body and his blood, his, the, his everlasting life, and they're given to you. This is why, my friends, um, if you're able to do so, receiving uh, your First Communion is so amazing and so important because Jesus actually feeds you with his gifts of love when you come to the Mass and are able to receive Holy Communion. So, my friends, today's reading has many beautiful things that are part of it, and this is part of our beautiful journey of Easter where Jesus is trying to help us to see him to know that he is truly present in our everyday lives and that he loves us. He loves you, my friend, 
and wants to help you to be a person of love. It's just awesome. So in thanksgiving, my friends, for this beautiful gift that Jesus wants to be so part of our lives, let us share this gift with the whole world through our uh, intercession prayers. So let's pray in thanksgiving for, for Jesus, that he shows up in our lives, that through the word of God, through the celebration of the Eucharist, he is truly present to us and he shares with us the gift of everlasting life and that he helps us to love one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray, my friends, for those for whom Jesus has a very special concern, the poor, the widow, the orphan, the lost, the broken. And let us also pray that we may be gifted with the love of the Spirit to care for these beautiful people in Jesus' eyes. Um, for we know that when we care for them, we are caring for Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray, my friends, for the sick, and the suffering. In, in particular, I'd like to pray for anyone in your family or your friend group that is having a hard time, whether it be illness of the body or the mind of the heart or the spirit, that they may experience healing, peace, and patience from others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for peace in our world, my friends. Like when Jesus rises from the dead, one of the first things he says is, peace be with you. Sadly, there are many troubled spots in our world, and we need to pray that the Holy Spirit can find a way to bring peace to people's hearts. Um, we're very mindful of our friends in Ukraine. Um, now we have conflicts in Sudan. There's other troubled spots in Ethiopia, parts of Latin America, all parts of the world, my friends, where there is conflict. Let us pray for the gift of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray, my friends, for a special intention that you might have. Let's take a moment to offer that intention to God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lastly, my friends, let us pray for all of our loved ones who have died. We know that they are with Jesus in the communion of love. Let us pray that through this little liturgy, our, the love of our hearts by the grace of the Holy Spirit may embrace our loved ones who are in heaven and that they may know of our care for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers together, my friends, let us say the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. So my friends, I hope your Easter journey is going well. And so thank you for spending time with me today. It's great to spend time with all of you and to pray for you. Thank you for your prayers. Like on a pastoral note, my friends, don't underestimate uh, the power of your prayer. Um, the kingdom of God belongs to young people like you. Um, you're closer to the kingdom than you might realize. So thank you so much for praying. It, it's important to Jesus. It's important to me, uh, but it really makes a, an impact on, on our world. Before we go, the school of the week. Okay. Oh, boy, the lid is really on there. And the winner is, drum roll please. Ben Caffrobe, St. Clair. Yay! Congratulations, Ben Caffrobe School. So let us pray for all of our friends at Ben Caffrobe. If you're not familiar with Ben Caffrobe School, it's our beautiful school, brand new to be honest. 
uh, that's dedicated to our First Nations, Métis, and Inuit friends, and they have beautiful programs in uh, that teach um, Cree and well, all of the beautiful teachings that our First Nations uh, friends have. A special shout out here from Sankatiri. So let us say, ask the Blessed Mother to end Sankatiri to pray for all of our beautiful students, teachers, and staff at Ben Caffrobe School. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, my friends, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.